Thanks for joining me on this video. If you haven't done so already, be sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification icon. That way you don't miss out on any new content on the channel. And also be sure to follow me on these other social media platforms. Links are in the description below. All right, have and have not fans. Another episode is in the books. Laugh not to cry. Um, Yeah, a pretty solid episode overall. I don't think that... Well, I did have a couple problems with it, but... Mainly enough, they go towards characters who I haven't really liked in quite some time, and that is basically uh, Justin and Candace, but I'll get to that later. Uh, we had a strong opening, picking up exactly where we left off. I love the fact that Mitch, even though he really isn't trying to live that Malone lifestyle, he is not afraid to step up to his family members and tell them what's going on. I mean, the fact that he swooped in there and saved Benny was actually a strong way to open the episode and you know uh making fun of Benny is like yeah I just saved your life and he's like no man I tripped I tripped and I mean it was all fun and games B uh, Mitch did save Benny's life but remember Benny was holding his own against two Malone family members it was going good until the gun came out so you know I think that opening really got me hyped for the rest of the episode and uh, I think like the first half of the episode itself really focused on um you know, over at Hannah's house, well, uh, Catherine giving her the happy pill. And I love that Catherine uh, made a reference to season one when uh, she was going through, you know, her breast cancer. Um, um, dang, I'm trying to think of the correct name of it. Uh, not chemotherapy, but uh, I cannot think of the name. It's like, you know, you know, like if you are like, if your leg or whatever is broken or paralyzed and you're going through physical therapy, what, was it chemotherapy? Is that the correct for it? Basically, when she was going through the breast cancer um, stage of her life back in season one, uh, basically, you know, um, Hannah gave her some marijuana to a calm nurse. Very funny episode from season one. But since it's on Hulu now, you can go back and watch it. But basically, you know, um, she gave her the pill, talking about Derek like a little schoolgirl. That was a nice scene. Uh, then we switch it over to when... Uh, Derek is walking Catherine outside and then we get the information about Veronica. So it seems pretty clear that Derek's past is unknown to Catherine. Hence why she was confused how Derek and Veronica knew each other. So remember that basically Veronica is the only one that knows all of Derek's secrets, his past, you know, all of the stuff he did in his criminal life. Hence why Catherine is in the dark about it. But uh, basically, you know, the way Derek is talking, you know, he can handle himself. So we'll have to wait and see what happens with that plot line. Um, then, you know, I knew that as soon as Catherine left, Benny and Mitch would show up because for some odd reason, uh, whenever we're at Hannah's house, where whenever, whenever somebody leaves, somebody shows up. But basically, uh, what we have now is Benny and Mitch coming. And for the life of me, I really wish that Derek would put Benny in his place. The fact that he was so rude and everything. And Derek was just trying to explain the situation. I just, that was annoying, but that's Benny's character. So I'm kind of used to it, but it was still just disrespectful the way it was going down. Uh, then they go into the house to talk with Hannah and she is literally, I, I could have sworn because I was watching some uh, Batman, the animated series uh, earlier today. I was like, okay, Hannah must have got some of that Joker venom. She up there. Okay. I understand her laugh. Like, <laughs> but she was going, I don't know what that screeching sound was like. <laughs> Did anybody else notice that? I was wondering, like, is there a balloon deflating off camera I don't know about? But it was like she was wheezing, and then she finally got the laughs out. It's like, <laughs> y'all are crazy. And I was wondering to myself, was that the happy pill that was kicking in? Because for her to have to ask Benny to explain where he got the $45,000 from, then asking Mitch what his family does, I'm pretty sure that it already been explained to uh, Hannah several episodes ago. So even though I would chalk it up to the pill making her woozy, she did pretty much clearly state how that guy that broke in was looking for Candace and the money belonging to the crier. So I don't know if this was done just to pad out the episode or yeah, but Hannah knew about Mitch's family and then the fact that Benny got the money from them. So uh, again, it, I'll just let I'll just say the pill was talking, but I mean it's not a complaint. It's just uh, something that I noticed during the actual scene. Um, you know, then 
Benny's looking around the house. He's pissed. I love how he was screaming into the pillow, but I'd be frustrated as well. It's like, okay, ma, I'm, I'm, po- I'm possibly going to die because we were robbed and you're going to laugh about it. So, hey, ain't nothing else to do there. Uh, then Derek was there. And um, then we go over to what really frustrated me. This happened right before commercial break. Mitch is like, this is bad, man. What are we going to do? And I'm like, Benny, you almost have $9 million in the bank account. Why the hell can you not just take the money out and then pay? I'm, I'm not even going to say it anymore. We've already talked talked about this enough in other videos. But, um, yeah, so basically Hannah told Benny that in the morning we're going to go to the bank and then give the money back to the criers, and then that was that. He calls Candace, and then Candace and RK both get back to the hotel, and uh, that's once, you know, Candace warns RK again not to mess around with Veronica but he doesn't listen because he thinks he can handle it. And, you know, here's the part of the episode where I really was like, are you freaking kidding me? Basically, Candace says that, can we do this later, Benny? It's 6 a.m. Put a pin in that. I want to talk about that later. But 6 a.m. I have so many questions. But uh, anyway, uh, let's just talk about uh, over at the hospital, you know, Jim shows up, asks David for help. And I've already done a couple of videos on that. I think I did one earlier uh, yesterday about, you know, um, uh, did David overhear what happened to Erica? Allegedly not. And I did feel bad for him when he was crying. I was like, that crazy bitch blew her up in the car. Okay, that was kind of funny. But yeah, I had to c- turn on the closed captions because I had trouble hearing what David was saying because he was talking into the pillow. And, um, you know, I, I couldn't even really hear what he was talking about, like the name of like the lawyer or attorney or whatever that he recommended for Jim. I'll probably catch that when I rewatch the episode. But, uh, yeah, basically, we know that uh, Jim was able to get some information to hopefully help his son finally have an FBI agent outside of the door. And um, then we get to another good part of the episode. We get some backstory. Uh, Maddie slash Madison uh, went to school with um, Jeffrey, Bobby Schaefer, the bully. And apparently Maddie was chunky back in his day, but he admired Jeffrey. Uh, apparently, you know, Jeffrey was called every gay slur under the book, under the, you know, under the sun. So did Jeffrey have gay tendencies when he was younger? Or was it just one of those schoolyard things where, you know, boys will be boys calling people out of their name? But yeah, I've always wondered about that because we got the wrestling team information way back during um after the quincy maxwell murder and that was when justin was beginning to stalk jeffrey and uh jeffrey pinned justin to the ground and it was like yeah i used to be on the wrestling team and then we got the bobby schaefer backstory uh back after um jeffrey had stabbed veronica so i'm glad the continuity is there this is what i'm talking about when you introduce new characters have them intertwine with a current character's past so their inclusion actually makes sense i actually like that maddie was on screen for like three or four minutes this episode, but it just felt natural because he's a new character, but he fits into the story. Then we get Justin's trifling ass on the episode, and I swear, like, I rarely try to say this about characters, but I just wish that he would be killed off. I have no interest in the character whatsoever. Yeah, you, 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 you so you're looking forward to the call. Well, he's under an investigation. Just, Justin, bye. I have nothing to say about that. Just bye, Justin. I'm done. I don't care. Um, then we go over to the hotel again and, uh, Broderick got my boy Broderick on screen. Glad to see him again. Him and Rocky are talking and just, uh, Broderick is, I, I'm, I'm going to guess that his plan with Catherine is not going to succeed. And I'm, I don't mean to knock this plot so quick, but we've, if you've noticed a trend in these characters, whenever a character is acting rashly or desperately, or they're impatient, it's like, the money we're getting now isn't enough. I'm tired of living like this. I want to do something else. Okay. I want to jump over five pegs to get to the, le- it's like playing a video game and you're on level four, but you want to hopscotch your way all the way to 25. And it doesn't really work that way because you're inexperienced. So Rocky warning Broderick about Catherine and how that plan wouldn't work is kind of like Candace warning RK about Veronica and how that plan is not going to work. And I definitely agree with that. In the long term, it's not going to work, but I think it's going to be a fun ride along the way. Uh, I mean, then the prostitution ring thing and, yeah, Candace. And is anybody with me just questioning the fact that Rocky seems to have healed from that beat down far too quickly? Has it only been like, 
two and a half, maybe three days max since he got beaten with that uh, golf club. Seriously, how the hell did he heal that fast? He must have that Deadpool or Wolverine healing factor. I don't know. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm glad to see Rocky and Broderick together again at the front desk, but I'm just talking about for continuity's sake, it doesn't really make sense. But what, whatever, whatever. So uh, after that, we get to one of my favorite parts of the episode where um, <laughs> um, uh, RK goes over to Veronica's house. I just love that background music that plays whenever RK and Veronica are together. And I just, he's like, yeah, I'm hungry. You got anything to eat? And uh, then it's like, you know, the staff and I have neighbors. I'm thinking to myself, well, Veronica, you really weren't seemingly con uh, concerned about your neighbors when um, you and David were yelling at each other after that bitch slap. So I don't really see why you're worried about neighbors now when RK wasn't even yelling. So I don't really see. But it was a cute scene. But Lord have mercy, when Veronica bust out that folder and paperwork like it was Maury with the paternity test for the DNA test on <laughs> About you are not the father in RK's face drop. I was done. I was done. So basically, it seems like Veronica wants to use RK to get to Jeffrey. But RK brought up the point that Justin pretty much spilled the beans on everything. So Veronica is going to get more intel from RK. And I like that. But it also uh, leads me to believe that she isn't aware at the moment that RK did steal Julie from her. Which again, I really hope that's brought up at some point. But the way things are going, you know, how Veronica was chuckling and then put on a serious face when RK left. She's probably figuring that Justin is even more of a thorn in her side than she thought. So I wouldn't be surprised if Veronica is the one that kills off Justin at some point. Just saying. Um, then I just want to make sure we didn't skip anything here. Uh, yeah, I, I will get to the 6 a.m. thing. Uh, then towards the end of the episode, you know, Wyatt's doing his constipation dance and like I did that video earlier a couple days ago, Sal Malone had a little blade under his tongue. He was about to use it, but then a cop came and then he just sat back down. But in the next episode, I ain't going to talk about how the preview comes up online, but what's your last name? Malone. We kill people. Oh, I kill people. I was laughing my ass off at that. But uh, I'm glad that scene was short and sweet because I didn't want to see, you know, Wyatt doing his potty dance for like 10 minutes. But, um... Then we get to the end of the episode where Benny goes to the hotel. And I really wish Mitch would have went with him. Um, then uh, talks with Candace. And again, I do not condone like, be, you know, hitting women and whatnot. But I wish that Benny would choke this bitch so much. It's just like Candace doesn't give a damn and lying right to your face. And I'm glad that he took, you know, her stuff and found the money. And it's just I get that Candace is like this character that's uncaring and whatnot, but it doesn't even seem like she even cares in terms of her delivery for her lies to Benny. And it's like, I don't really, those, that scene just turned my stomach because it was just so disgusting that your mom went through that because you put her in that situation. And I wish that Benny would have said something about the money. But you know what? I bet if Benny would have told her everything about the Malone's, um, loaning him the money, and if he didn't give it back, they would kill him. That Candace would probably make a desperate attempt. It's like, well, you know what? If you get if you get mom to give us the, give me the money, then um, I'll tell you about the forty five thousand dollars. She is just dirty enough to do that shit. And I loved when um, uh, Benny was like, "Are you out of your effing mind with this bullshit about the money, guys?" I've gotten to the point. I know a lot of people feel the same way. Candace saying that this is her money. It is a done. I am over that. That's almost that injustice. I'm not gay. It's just so I'm done. I just don't even care. It's like every time it comes out of their mouth, I just want to just shut the TV off, shut the TV off. I, I just can't stand it. Are you really that dense? I mean, same thing with Veronica as well, but just for these two characters. But uh, then, you know, the money falls out and. Is, is that a running gag now? Like every time the $45,000 needs to appear, it's going to fall out of somebody's pocket or a random spot. It's like when Benny got up off the couch, it fell on the floor. Then Hannah found it. Then Melissa said it was her money. Um, then when, you know, Benny's packing up the stuff. And I'm really thinking like if Candace really didn't want him to find the money, she didn't do a very good job of convincing him not to go in the drawer. I mean, that felt a little odd to me like I get it she just woke up she was tired and that goes back to what I was about to say about the 6 a.m. like 
how far did RK and Candace have to walk? I know I was talking with a friend and he was telling me like Candace, Candace's hair looks different uh, than it did last week. And I'm like, yeah, because I mean, it was probably the middle of the night. God knows how long RK and Candace had to walk from the van to the hotel. And I'm like, she did all that in heels, which is impressive. But I just don't understand like why she didn't put more of an effort to stop Benny from going through her stuff. I mean, that makes whatever. But uh, yeah, then I did like the little nod to continuity where Benny was like, because Mitch was suspecting that the crazy girl, Melissa, and then Benny kind of stood up for it. I'm like, oh, snap, maybe he did care a little. And then, you know, she jumped off the roof. Um, I'm trying to remember when, but when did Benny find out that Melissa jumped off the roof? I can't remember. I know that he was... Uh, at the hotel, I believe when that actually occurred, but I don't remember him finding out. I, I'm not saying it didn't happen. I just can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, let me know in the comments what episode and how he found out about that. I, I don't remember. Uh, let's see here. Then I think that's about it, to be honest. Yeah, I think that was about it. Well, yeah, the 6 a.m. This is what bugged me about that. So how long was Hannah awake when she told Derek when he was fixing the air conditioning for the, uh, uh, apartment complex or whatever uh, or the house across yeah i think it was like an apartment complex across the street that seemed to me like it was about maybe a somewhere between like 7 p.m to 9 p.m because we know hannah goes to sleep early anyway so she said you know she got off the phone i think with Catherine and was you know going to the kitchen and said benny was there that's when malik was there then that scuffle occurred because i don't think that i mean rk and candace were in the van the whole time asking what was taking so long then Derek walks up the street and because he heard you know Hannah yelling and then we get the whole thing with uh Benny at the hotel then Malone's chasing him down Catherine comes over to the house how how long were RK and Candace walking okay I don't know that part just pissed me off I didn't I I don't know if she was exactly I, I don't know if she was exaggerating or what but do these, did these people not go to sleep? I don't know. I don't know. I, I know I'm overthinking this. Maybe I heard it wrong, but I could have sworn that when Benny called Candace, she was like, it's 6 a.m. Or did she say, can we talk about this at 6 a.m.? I don't really know. I just, I could have sworn she said 6 a.m. That makes no, you remember I did that rant way back when, when um bah, 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 that was the episode that, uh, why it slit Benny's throat because he was like, I want to wake you up the next morning so you can get to the ATM and give you my money. But then in that same episode in the earlier scene, Derek met Hannah coming out of Catherine's house at 6 PM to go make dinner for Benny. And that entire episode made no sense continuity wise. So are you telling me that all these events occurred over an entire night? Nobody got any sleep. And you know what? I don't even want to talk about it anymore, but overall, I did enjoy the episode. I thought it was a pretty good episode. I just am tired of Candace and Justin. I'll give this episode an 8.5 out of 10. I think it was pretty damn good. Uh, a pretty good segue into the break we're having before October the 2nd. And guys, with the uh, seasons on Hulu, use this time to catch up. I know I'm going to definitely go back and uh, rewatch some episodes, but... Yeah, solid episode, Laugh Not to Cry. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. You know the drill. Sometime tomorrow, I'll go ahead and do my trailer breakdown for uh, the next episode, Stronger Together. But, you know, prayers for everybody out there. I'm in Virginia, and then also for the people in the Carolinas, basically the East Coast. Uh, the hurricane is coming, so hopefully, you know, no flooding or power outages or anything like that. I'll keep you posted. If I don't post videos right away, then obviously, you know, it has to do with the weather. But uh, hopefully we'll be rocking again and doing more videos later this week. So take care, be safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.